The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who live in it, for he has formed it on the seas and he has established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? It is the one who has clean hands and a pure heart. Who does not trust in idols or swears by the false gods. They will receive a blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Savior. Such is the generation of those who seek him. You seek the face of the God of Jacob. Will you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, Lord, as we humbly, Lord, come before you in praises of song. And Father, as we stand shielded, Lord, by your almighty presence to protect us. But Lord, we as Moses stand in your presence and your glory. Move now our Father in our midst is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. And amen. And again, what a privilege and an honor it is is to come into his house and worship together. Do we have announcements or something we just want to share before we go into the worship hour this morning? We have two bears. Bears for Mary Wolf, who was taken to the hospital, I think, on Thursday. She had fallen. She was dehydrated. She has a UTI. She is low in sodium and potassium. They're treating her for that. They did an MRI. Everything came back good, but she's still very unbalanced. So they're going to do an MRI of the spine and go from there. She's going to do physical therapy in the hospital and at home. Okay. Thank you. I have the other one? Right here. Oh, you have the other one? Uh, yeah, I have the other one. I have an announcement. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bear first. Uh -huh. um, and yesterday, one of my customers was telling me that her daughter has been in Ruby for five months with some type, and she tried to explain it to me, and I wasn't quite understanding, but some kind of digestive issues, diabetes, just a whole host of things. She's apparently a young woman. She has six children. And um, she just, she said, I know you know the power of prayer, so would you be praying? I said, I'll do one better. <laughs> well, her name is... Um, yeah, no. Okay, it's on the card. Yeah. All right. Sharon. Sure. Just after um, services, we'll be having cupcakes for um, birthdays and anniversaries. Okay. Thanks, Sharon. Take your hymn books now <laughs> as we turn to uh, as we turn to the Word of God through the ministry of music. You've heard me say hundreds of times. Probably going to hear me say hundreds more times. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I just want to say it. But the older I get, the more I love the ministry of music. You ever been to a nursing home? Many of them might forget their mom and dad. But I'm telling you, if the word of God is instilled in them, according to the word of God, it will never leave them. How and how true that is. So, and my chemo kicks in every once in a while, and it's a big joke at work because they lie. I'll say something, they say, you didn't say that, and then they'll giggle back and forth. Mark 9, 24 says, most of you know this story as a, as a father. He said, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Oh, for a faith that will not shrink. 
Sister Julie, do we need to hear it through one time? We need to hear it one time through. <laughs> Let us stand together. I don't think, does anybody know it? I don't even know it. Oh, we have one, Sister Pat. Play it through one time, and then I, I chose this for the lyrics of faith that will not shrink. Sister Julie, bring us through one time, and then we'll start after. Lord, give us such a faith as this, and then whate'er may come, we'll taste them here, that hallowed bliss of an eternal home. Guilty. How much, thank you, Sister Sharon, for sharing what lies ahead. Let us come to prayer, and, and as we do, that hallowed bliss. We have praises and concerns this morning as we go to prayer. Sister Sharon. Um, That's for Virginia? Is that where it is? Ohio. Ohio. Okay, thanks. We certainly will. Yes, sir. My prayer request is a little bit opposite of what most people probably ask for. I pray that my blood pressure will go up. And <laughs> we certainly will. Others? Yes, Sister Pat. I've seen a little girl when you named him just glows. <laughs> Pray for dads. Others? Yes. Just to praise how God just watched over our family this week. Thank you. Yes. Girl. Yes. Just 
just thank everyone for the prayers for me. I think I'm going to live now. <laughs> there were some days that it was pretty rough, but um, I am starting to feel better. Okay. And this week, the therapist at Stonerise had my uncle standing. He was oh, actually bearing awesome. weight on his right side, but when you set him down in the chair and ask him to lift his leg, it just didn't. But he was bearing weight. Good. Thank you. Oh, awesome. Yeah, Trinity and Natasha are beat camp this week. Yes. All the littles, so. Good. Yeah, camp. How much? Josh is going to. I was getting there. <laughs> Thank you. Sissy, tell them about Kaylee's camp, too. She was just past. Oh, Kaylee had a good heart camp this past week. She goes every year. Um, and I think she can go until she's 18. But she had a fabulous week and was glad to be home this year. Yeah. And it was Ripley. Unspoken requests, unspoken praises within your heart. Sister Joy. Our Father in heaven, nothing to you we bring, Lord, but our love and our belief of your Son, Jesus, through you. And Father, this morning, as we come before you as a congregation, Lord, it, oh, Lord, just honoring you, worshiping you through Jesus. And Lord, you've heard and wonderful requests, Lord. As Jesus instructed us through his word and even when his ministry was here on earth, bring our burdens and our praise and our worries unto him. But Lord, thank you for prayer. And thank you for answered prayer. And Jesus had a tender spot in his heart for children. And Lord, thank you for placing that tender spot in our hearts. And especially, Lord, for the ones who's children. Lord, seem to shine forth. And as a mother or grandmother of angelmen, Lord, what a beautiful name for a child that just don't understand, Lord, that they're special. All the world might want to hide them in a closet. But a mother, or grandmother, or father of, of the Word of God wants him to shine forth. So, Lord, I pray for each one that is wanting to learn more, Lord, so they can do more. So, bless Sharon and her friends, and Adam and Steph, as they chose to accept one of your creations knowing the great love that she needed and the great love they had to share. In each camp, Lord, as it 
seems to come and go. And, but may there be an everlasting change, Lord, in the lives of children and counselors. Even the ones, Lord, that travel back and forth. Lord, when a little girl is shy and when she hears her daddy's name, May we be likewise, Lord, when we hear your name. And above all, Lord, I just give you thanks for times such as these. When we, as a body, as it was in that upper room when Jesus laid in the grave and waited on the Holy Spirit, it was as one. All differences, Lord, was in the past. May we likewise, Lord, continue to wait on you. In Christ's precious and holy name. Each time my, my AFib came back about a month ago, I don't know why anybody would pay good money to get a buzz is beyond me. Shoot, I can just kneel and have a prayer and stand up and got about a seven. But why do we do the things we do? Remember Jesus asked, Elijah, and I'll share a little bit of that today in the message. I'll change the wording. Just God asked Elijah, what are you doing here, Elijah? And he begins to say, Lord, you, you've, you've killed, or Jezebel's killed all the prophets, and I alone remain. God finally said, no, you're not. Your brother Obadiah has a hundred hidden caves, and I've got 7,000 that I'm taking care of. Then he asked him the same question. Now what are you doing here? He said, God, I alone remain. God was wanting him to know that he still needed. Many say that it was the same cave where God placed Moses. Very well could have been when he passed by in the hollow of his hand. But you're not alone. We're not this isolated sheltering, and God does shelter us. And I, for one, have learned the lesson a couple times. You can't do it on your own. So my praise unto you is we don't have to. So let us, as we give, just continue to give together for one purpose. That the glory of God would shine forth. Ushers, come forward. Let's read.
us stand together. Father, as one body in Christ, do we bring these gifts, offerings, and tithes before you. Receive now, our Father, is our prayer in your Son's precious name. Amen. You may be seated. want to take out your Bibles, it's the scripture is 1 Kings 17, 1 through 16. 
Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishbe in Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah. Leave here, turn eastward, and hide in the Kerith Ravine, east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and I have ordered the ravens to feed you there. So he did what the Lord had told him. He went to the Kerith Ravine, east of the Jordan, and stayed there. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning and bread and meat in the evening, and he drank from the brook. Sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Go at once to Zarephath of Sidon and stay there. I have commanded a widow in that place to supply you with food. <clears throat> so he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called to her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink? As she was going to get it, he called, And bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Elisha said to her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first Make a small cake of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord gives rain on the land. She went away and did as Elisha told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of flour was not used up, and the jug of oil did not run dry, in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, too many times, Lord, we and I forget, Lord. I forget when the flower is running dry, Lord. The jar of your grace and your blessing seems to be empty. So, Lord, may the Holy Spirit, whom you chose to be our counselor and our guide, and Jesus, our Savior, who died upon a cross, Lord, come into each heart here anew and afresh. Lord, I thank you for Chris and the reading of your precious and holy word. And may now, Lord, your word be embedded deeper than in this world. Deeper, Lord, than even our very thoughts. And Lord, come now anew and afresh in my weakness, Lord. Show forth your strength. In Christ's holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Chris. Every day as we go through life, there's challenges. And my mind goes back several years, as Sister said it. that they're going to Ohio to learn how a grandmother can help her grandchild. Isn't that awesome? My little grandchild, I think, was two and a half, maybe three, but probably on the lower side of that. And, of course, most of you know that she was born with only partial working of her heart and from nine months to about a year she, not that it was give and take but it took special care 
And she became a brat because of that. Not just an ordinary brat. I mean a brat. My grandchild. Yeah, PK. And she was about three, and they was at the house, and she was now unhooked of everything, but still a brat. And she started disrespecting me. I said, you stop that. And I'm not going to count to 10 the next time. Just don't do it. And my son-in-law, Bill, was there. and We would got him something. I don't remember what it was. But there was a box there of probably two foot by three foot high. And they was playing with that box, as all kids do. Throw the toy away and play with the cardboard box. I said, if you disrespect me one more time, I'm putting you in that box. No, you won't. Three seconds later, she was in the box. I don't want you here. I said, are you going to be good now? Yes. She came out just screaming and ran to mommy. Papa, put me in a box. but she didn't disrespect me. And yet to this day, you asked her, what happens when you disrespect your papa? He put me in a box. You see, God sometimes might not put us in a box. But when he has, something planned for you. And he always has something planned for us. And today I want to use the analogy, if you would just bear with me a little bit, of John 13, the Gospel of John, chapter 13. And John 13 is held in the upper room. And most of you, if I would start, you could probably, maybe not word for word, but you could finish the chapter, almost every one of you, <coughs> who has been to communion as many times as you've been to communion. And supper being ended. And Jesus took off his outer garment and girded himself with a towel and began to wash the disciples' feet. And he came to Peter, and Peter asked the question, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no place with me. And then Peter throwed his shoulder back and said, Okay, Lord, not just my feet, but my head and my hands and the body too. And then Jesus says, Nah, you're not all clean, but your feet. What Jesus was teaching was the same thing that God was trying to teach Elisha. Jesus says, I didn't come to be served, but to serve. And feet washing is when you can humble yourself great enough to allow someone else to serve. you know how hard it was to let someone serve me in a humble way without expecting it, without 
disrespecting the servant. The greatest one was probably when I was going through my first row of cancer. And I'd been in the hospital probably six, seven weeks. You know what a sponge bath is good for? Getting you wet. That's it. And I understand ladies more than I ever did about washing their hair. I, I get it. I might be bald as a turnip, but I get it. In about seven or eight weeks, I finally begged the hospital, can I take a shower? They said, no. I said, what if I get someone to help me take a shower? And I came really close to the aides, and two of them said, we'll help you take a shower. And I said, oh, would you? And, of course, showers right across the hall. And finally, they, from here to there, they took me over to a wheelchair. And they got me undressed, and both of them held me under each arm, and they got in the shower with me. And for about 30 seconds, I was in heaven. And I faded back into the chair and they put me to bed. I understood what it was to be served. That's what Jesus is telling the church You see, Elijah just showed up one day. Doesn't say his mother, his father. He just says where he came from. That's it. And I don't know if he had a chip on his shoulder or not, but I do know this, and Chuck Swindell says it the best. He had just been trained at the brook to trust God, but now he needed, according to Chuck Swindell, and I agree 100%. He needed some advanced training. Go to any military. Just pick one. And they have a special forces to do something only they can do. And they don't go from boot camp to special forces. They go through advanced training day after day. God has a place for each one of you. And he has a task awaiting you. But anyone who is used of God must first face advanced training by fire. God needs to distill you maybe one or two more times. So he told Elijah, I've chosen a widow to serve you. Elijah says, wait a minute here, God. Don't you have that backwards? Is it? prophets to serve them you see sometimes God's something we just don't understand sometimes when he wants to continue that distilling process or that molding process he sends you to Zarephath you know what Zarephath means it means to melt or to smelt. Smelt's when you take out all the impurities of dirt and all that's left is the pure mineral. And if you walk with God, let me, let me back up. When you walk with God and when you walk with him long enough, you'll discover his test doesn't come back to back 
this test comes back to back to back to back to back. You see, and we're like Elijah. I'm like Elijah. Made it through the first one. Lord, I, I made it through this test. Now what do you got for me? Nothing. Because you'll fail if I send you into the battle now. And that's why I am so dead sent against a young pastor going into a troubled church or a troubled community. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard tell of. First, train him up with love and compassion and care. But if they disrespect you, and disrespect the word. You put them in a box. And when they come out. They'll understand. When God turns up. The furnace. He's just simply distilling you. To be like Jesus. He's simply taking the four matters that makes us. Makes me the child that he wants me to be. He wants to take out all the, the anger. And I've heard that so many times. I, this water just runs off. Oh, this makes me so angry. No, it doesn't. You're already angry. It's in you. Nothing makes you angry. It's what's inside of you. And there's only one way to get it out. And that's for God to turn the heat up. To distill all the impurities is in you that the good is gathered together for Christ. You see, God knows what the future holds for each and every one of his child. And that's why he told Elijah. Then the word of the Lord came to him because he knew where he was. He not only knew where he was, he knew where he was going. Many times in life, our thin is just our skin is just a little bit too thin. And I'm telling you, in Christian life today. You better have Jesus Christ build up within you. Because he's going to stand you into a battle that is raging. Remember the three Hebrew children? They were just teenagers. But yet they have withstood the test of time from Jerusalem into Babylon. He said, don't care what the world says. We can't get angry over, let me back up. We must not let the world into the same place where Jesus is. You can't do it. And you can't be arrogant about it either. You see, servant. When God places you in that refiner's fire, tells me he hasn't forgotten you. He knows exactly where you are and he knows where you're going. You see, Psalms 37, if you're having trouble with the world, just turn to Psalms 37. And in his life, and in the psalmist's life, I can just picture the psalmist as things wasn't going well. Troubles might have been overwhelming him. The trials of everyday life had maybe took away his joy. I'm just going to 
proofread Psalms 37 for you. And just You need to circle it or be like Jeremiah, rip it out and eat it. This one's for me and Chris. Do not fret because of those who are evil. Trust in the Lord and do good. Take delight in the Lord. Commit your ways to the Lord. Be still before the Lord. Then here's what happened when you do all of that. The Lord will make your steps firm. The Lord will uphold you with his mighty hand. The Lord will love you when you are just, but he loves you all the time. Hope in the Lord and keep his ways. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord and on and on and on it goes. You see, God will take them disparaging trials in your life and he'll replace it with his word. God told Elijah, arise. That wasn't hard. The brook dried up. Leave this place. Wasn't hard at all. And then the difficulties began to teach. I want you to go roughly 100 miles. Now remember, he was a wanted fugitive. Ahab had put a bounty upon his head, dead or alive. He said, God, you want me to trudge a hundred miles with a bounty on my head and I'm hiding here at the brook? Why don't you just give me water where I am? But he arose. Probably dried the brook up so he would leave. Guilty. But God took care of him. Doesn't say one thing happened in that hundred mile trip. But oh, when he got to Zarephath, special force training began to kick in. Now, I can't speak for most of you, but I know that sure had to be humbling. I have chosen the weakest of the weak to take care. Chosen a poor widow, not one that lived in a castle or a palace. But when you get there, I want you to stay there. Same thing he told him about the brook. And I don't know what God has in store for each one of us. But I know one thing. He's preparing us each and every moment of each and every day. You see, you and I need to be like Elijah. Myself and especially. And he arose and he went. You see, so many times in life, We have to give it the fleece test. Lord, if, if this is really where you want me to go, tomorrow when I come out, the ground will be wet and the fleece will be dry. And it was. Lord, can I do this one more time to make really sure? You ever been blindsided? My first impression. Guilty. About six years ago. I don't know if I ever used this story or not. I had Lynn's car for eight years. He has a, what was this? I don't know, a car. Lexus. Thanks, Chris. 
And he was in Germany, and he was moving to Hawaii. He said, Dad, I want you to send my car to Hawaii. I said, you get her ready, I'll take her anywhere you want. Finally found someone that would take it from the visitor center in West Virginia on Route 68. The driver of the truck will be calling you. And he did. So he called me. He said, I'll, I'll be there at 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. I said, okay, not a problem. I'm about 20 miles away. I'll be at the visitor center. So went to the visitor center, and he called me like three more times. He said, I'm, I'm running a little late, and I'm down at Cumberland, but, but I'll be there. I'm, I'm on my way. I'm just, just running some late. So he called again. He called again right before he got the exit. He said, I'm here at the exit. I said, I'm right where you get off the exit. You'll, you'll see the car sitting there, and Hazel's waiting to take me back. So there's two cars there, and he got off, and tooted his horn, went on around, parked in the parking lot. I pulled up behind him and got out, and he got out. And I expected in my mind an old man about 70 with a beer with his pants hanging down suspenders. That was my mind from talking to him. He got out, was a kid about six years old with a suit on. Real skinny, come up, shook my hand. My first words out of my mouth was, do you know or does your mommy know that you're out this late? He goes, yeah, I get that a lot. Aren't we the same way? We got all these expectations built up within us. And God says, I want you to join special forces but before you go I want to train you to be a servant before you can serve no wonder Jesus wanted to wash their feet man how humbling that is he ain't washing my feet. Let me wash yours. Be glad to. But no. When you're in special forces, when you're a born-again believer of the Word of God, it takes more. This is just here. To allow someone to serve you than to serve. See, talking about God's pretty easy. Showing God through this earthly flesh the service and serving. Many times in life, and I'm probably all of us has heard the little cliche. Don't talk the talk unless you can walk the walk. Pretty easy to lie, isn't it? You ever spent time in the presence of a true person of faith? And I'm not talking about the fake kind where Sunday morning, I'm not talking about that talking about through their greatest trials that they're shining forth. Gee, we've had so many here, I don't even want to start naming them. But I know one thing, I want to be around them. I wanted a hug from them. If it bleeds through, oh, and you know what? It does. How much I learned from ladies and men of faith who didn't mind serving and they didn't mind being served. You see, you need them in our life. Children need them in our life. Little children need someone. when the world is falling apart 
They need someone in their life where they can look up to. That's you. And what a fearful place to be. So I would challenge us each and every day. When you're in Zarephath, when you're in the fire, what a promise God has in store for us. What a promise God has in store for you. So when someone wants to serve, God's just melting off the impurities of your life and mine. His precious name, and let us pray. And Father in heaven, thank you, Lord, that you remind us again and again. Lord, there's still some impurities in us. Just fill us, Lord, without our permission. Mold us, Lord, into the child you would have us to be. And Lord, whether we're serving or be served, may we do it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Take your hymn books now as we turn. Hymn number 574, another beautiful hymn. What does Jesus care? Mr. Julie, let us stand together.
And now, as our young acolytes come forward, may we as individuals and we as a body stand forth in these times that we're in. Forth for the word. forces around us is nowhere near the strength that the force within. So may we withstand the force of the word of God. Let us pray. And now our Father, as we come to the close once more of this worship service, and Lord, Two little children, Lord. Each holds within their arms a monetary bear. That is, each time we bring them before you, we came as nothing but worldly. But Lord, once they've been passed through the congregation and been taken to the very portals of heaven, all to the eye, Lord, nothing's changed. But Lord, to the believer, everything changed. Not by the prayer itself, Lord, but by you. Your presence, your love, and your power. May they go out now, Lord, ordained and set apart. Comfort and to bring forth your truth to a hurting person. And bless, Lord, the food which we are about to partake, Lord, just the dessert. But Lord, final dessert is still awaiting us. But bless this one until we receive your call from heaven. Thank you, Lord, for a service such as this. May each one now, Lord, Go out into the world as special force. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.